Morning, YouTube. Sean at Top 5 Fit. I uh, wanted to give my first opinion piece on an upcoming event that, unless you have been under a rock and not really paying attention to current events, uh, the Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather fight, which of course has been plastered all over just about every social media site, as well as the news, as well as, oh God, newspapers, just every medium possible. You're going to see something about this fight. And what I wanted to do was basically just share some thoughts and opinions on what's actually going to happen. And, and I guess how I feel about the event in, you know, in and of itself. So let's break right into it. Um, to start off with, I guess I'm not quite sure that the fans of both MMA and boxing, you know, in its truest form are going to get what they're looking for. The emphasis, of course, is on the gratuitous amount of shit talking that's going on between them, as well as who's going to win. And that's okay. That's what athletics has pretty much come down to over the years. And now it seems like that is the only thing that matters, who wins, who loses, who makes the most money. When kind of what I would like to point out, I guess, and, and things I've learned along my own fitness journey, and I guess that's why I'm doing the video here is to share those experiences with you. Um, I kind of feel the event in and of itself is kind of a degradation of both sports. It's, it's really dumbing down what each of these individuals has had to put into their career, uh, starting with Conor McGregor. Um, and again, besides all of the bravado and shit talking and the <sighs> amount, the, the huge amounts of machismo that exists with this individual, this man is a technician and he is capable of adapting to just about any environment that he's thrown into. Now, the years that he's actually spent working on his ground game, his jiu-jitsu game, obviously there's some judo in there. You have to get people to the ground. Um, his stand-up game is also incredibly sound. This man knows how to throw hands. He can bang with you. Now, having said all of that, you're now going to take this individual, this well-rounded individual, and stick him into an environment where the only thing he's allowed to use is his hands. You know, that's... Kind of like taking an NFL player and putting him on a soccer field, or if you are from the rest of the world, you'll, you'd call it football too. But that seems like such a gross waste of talent to me and such a disrespect to the time, the effort, the hours that this individual has put into developing himself into a sound warrior. Now, on the other side of that, you have... Floyd Mayweather, who, let's be clear, when this man reaches 90 years old, his hands are probably still going to be faster than the, and I guess that's if he reaches 90 years old. Boxing is a tough sport. You take a lot of hits. It, it screws things up. But muscle memory matters when it comes to an individual like that. His speed is I mean, it's, it's, it's not something that the average individual is even going to be able to stand in front of. And even someone like Conor McGregor, you're talking about a time difference. Conor McGregor spent his career developing a well-rounded, well-controlled, full you know, capacity, fully functioning fight game for the cage. Whereas Floyd, Floyd Mayweather has spent his entire career developing speed. The man is basically one continuous fast twitch fiber. Like he, he, he can obviously go the distance if he needs to, but the explosiveness that this man can produce and do so at will, you know, he doesn't even have to think about the patterns that he can create with his hands. Now in my own fighting experiences, uh, or just, I guess any type of self-defense, martial arts, whatever you want to call it, in my own experiences, you know, I'm 
I guess, very realistic about what my structure is capable of and what I'm able to do. And I tend to practice within those realms. Um, being a larger male, I don't anticipate standing up with somebody that long. Um, I work a little bit on your hand speed to make sure you can defend and throw the necessary jab, but ultimately trying to use my weight and I guess mobility is always going to be something that, you know, I want to bring to the table and take advantage of. When you put together a fight between a well-rounded cage MMA fighter and a boxer, and I said this earlier, you're basically asking both of them to dumb down their abilities. So by putting these two men into a, you know, into a ring and of course charging a ridiculous amount of money for it, which we'll get into later. Um, you, you're not going to see the best that these athletes have to offer. My ultimate prediction is Mayweather is basically going to walk out and have no respect whatsoever for Conor McGregor's striking game. Um, he'll dance with him. He'll, impress him with his foot speed. He will definitely get some hits in because, you know, the man has pinpoint accuracy with his hands. Conor McGregor, however, can take hits. This man, again, knows how to control his heart rate, how to control himself when he's up against the cage. And, you know, a very angry, you know, opponent is basically trying to put him out. So what I think there's going to be as far as maybe round one, round two, if it gets there, round three. You know, you never know with these events. And and I guess that's my point is you're not going to see me jumping from one side to the other and saying, oh, this person's going to win or that person's going to win. It, it's, it's, it's more along the lines of are the people that are actually paying for this event going to get what they want to see? And I'm not quite sure they will. Uh, I, I think that there's going to be a lot of showmanship, a lot of bravado, and eventually somebody is going to get knocked down, which will, of course, bring about a whole lot of cheering and booing at the same time. And then some controversial ending where basically people are going to argue for the next three to four months. Now, what I would like to see, and remember, this is an opinion piece, if we're truly to respect what each practitioner brings to the table here. And we're trying to find out who the best warrior is when it comes down to it. Ditch the shit talking, first of all. Shut up. I don't want to hear you guys anymore. This whole idea of standing in front of each other and who can come up with the, you know, the, the best put downs and the best, you know, it, it's very reminiscent of bus rides that I used to take to, football games, you know, with the rest of the team to pass the time, we would basically play the dozens. And for those of you who are not old enough to even know what that is, because remember, I'm thousands of years old, we would basically crack jokes about each other's mothers until we were, you know, laughing so hard that, you know, we were almost throwing up and red in the face. But that's all I see when I'm looking at these people, these two individuals going back and forth and basically just trying to out shit talk each other. If this is truly going to be an event of who is the best warrior, then here's my suggestion, uh, best out of four. But if Conor McGregor has to shut down his ground game and keep his feet on the floor and completely ignore years of conditioning and training and you know, body awareness and so on and so forth, then at some point, Floyd Mayweather should have to make the same sacrifice. So as far as I'm concerned, this one event that's coming up, it's just about the money. It's just about, let's see how many likes we can get in social media. Let's see how many, you know, people we can get to pay $75, $150 for a pay-per-view and then God knows how much for the ringside seats. I want to see a few matches between these two. I want to see boxing match, cage match, and then perhaps some type of endurance event at the end. And, and even an equal judgment on all three for both of these men. To me, that's worth actually paying money for. Now, we're actually comparing apples to apples and not just saying, hey, 
it doesn't matter that you've been in a cage for years and that you've actually developed the ability to move like water when you're on the ground with somebody. And it also ups the ante a little bit for the boxer. Now you have to learn how to use other elements of your structure. You don't get to just use your hands and your torso and your foot movement. You, you actually have to engage this individual in close quarters, which a lot of times, you know, boxers don't like to do. So at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, you're going to pay your money. You're going to watch the fight because your friends want to watch the fight or the local bar has bought the fight and they want you to go in there so that you spend money and buy drinks and make predictions and, you know, talk about what you know when it comes to. And there are a lot of you out there, most of you out there, I'm just going to go ahead and say it like that, know more about cage fighting and boxing than I do. I am an amateur uh, spectator at best. As far as my own practices are concerned, same thing, amateur. You know, a white, a forever white belt mentality. I, I know nothing and I will continue to know nothing. I, that's, that's the whole point of why I like to listen and watch and pay attention to videos and pay attention to other instructors because I like to see what they bring to the table. I don't ever consider myself as a know-it-all. When it comes to situations like this, and when it comes to events like this, I do like to look at them from a very realistic standpoint. And the realism of this is, is it is a show. It is a performance for the masses. This is for the mob. This is for all of you out there who want to see these two athletes clash. But make no mistake, mistake about it. This event does not respect either boxing or MMA. It's, if anything, it, it makes a joke of both of them. The fact that, again, Connor has to slice his ground game and his practice in half just to step into this ring, and that Mayweather doesn't have to go through the learning curve of being able to use his body in totality when it comes to battle. That's a bit insulting as far as the disciplines themselves are concerned. So have fun with the fight. Enjoy it. Enjoy your friend and family time. Enjoy the beverage that goes along with it. And hopefully you revel in the shit talking that goes on during. But keep this in mind. And if you are at all serious about whether you're being a spectator or whether you actually want to be a practitioner, technique matters, time spent matters. And don't think for one second that just because these two men are clashing, that whatever result may come about would be the same result if you took a heavyweight boxer and a heavyweight cage fighter or a lightweight, lightweight, whatever combination you want to make. This is going to be a completely unique situation. This is going to be a completely unique outcome. But at the end of the day, it's not fair. It is not in line with what either of them have built themselves up to be. And it is nothing more than an event that ultimately makes the masses happy. So I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this, and I understand that. That's okay. But trying to be as well-rounded and balanced as an individual as I can. I have to see this for what it is. And it's a money grab. It's a money grab on both sides. And it is disrespectful in nature to each side's practices. That's all. So uh, again, just sharing an opinion. It's, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to think this way. I'm not trying to sway, you know, your beliefs or what you think is going to happen this you know, coming Saturday. But and I hope you do. If you are watching, I hope you enjoy and I hope you get out of it what you're looking for. But personally, I'm going to spend time with my aquariums and my garden uh, and probably watch a couple of jujitsu videos to suck a little less. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the box below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again.